Hey everyone, Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor here. You know, I'm getting old. Yep, it's true, I just had a birthday, I just turned 56, and I started thinking about sleep as we age. And there are a lot of questions that I've got, like how does sleep change as we age? Do we need less sleep as we become older? Could a person expect to experience even more sleep problems or have a sleep disorder as they get older? And what can we do to get good sleep? These are all questions that I've been asking myself. I decided to dive in and really get the skinny, if you will, on what's going on with aging and sleep. One of the things I like to do is kind of get an overall idea of what does sleep look like across your lifespan. So here's a chart where it's just looking at normal sleep and aging and what we call sleep efficiency. And so what sleep efficiency is, is it's the amount of time that you spend in bed asleep. Generally speaking, we like that number to be at about mm, in the 90 range, right? So 90% of the time that you're in bed, you're asleep. On this chart, you can see that the squares represent uh, men and the circles represent women. And so we can see that there does appear to be a little bit of age differences in terms of overall sleep efficiencies, but across the age span, it definitely seems to go down. Once you hit 60 or 70, you can pretty much be assured that maybe 80% of the time you're gonna be asleep and maybe 20% of the time that you could be awake. So what are all the different changes that we know? Well, number one, there's a lot of increased napping. We're not really sure why this is other than without having specific structure throughout the day, like going to work, clocking in, coming home, there's an occasion to be on the couch and if there's nothing to do and somebody gets bored, they may end up napping. We also see an increased sleep latency, meaning how long it takes a person to fall asleep at night. That could have something to do with napping during the day. We also see an increase in awakenings and arousals. You might be wondering, what's the difference between awakening and an arousal? An awakening is where somebody actually wakes up for two, three, four minutes at a time, uh, maybe even more. Arousals are very, very brief, but they pull people out of the deeper stages of sleep and put them into the lighter stages of sleep. So this is a situation where arousals basically lead to poor quality sleep. Now, we also see a decrease in stages three and four. Remember, that's that wake up and feel great sleep. That actually decreases, and we see an increase in stages one and two, which is kind of not great sleep. I mean, remember, that's the light sort of crappy sleep. Also, we see a decrease in REM sleep. Uh, remember, REM sleep appears to be equally distributed throughout sleep cycles, and so there's no increase in REM at the end of the night like we used to find. So it used to be towards the end of the night, that's when you'd have the preponderance of REM. Now it just seems to be kind of skimming across the surface throughout the night. As I said from the chart earlier, we do see a reduced sleep efficiency, increases in shift uh, stage changes, so what ends up happening is people go from stage one to stage two to stage one to stage two to stage one to stage two, and they kind of get stuck pinballing back and forth. That can be a problem as well. We also see fewer total cycles. You know, the average person seems to have between four and five cycles as we get older. The barriers seem to go to the sideways and we end up with only three cycles. Also, we do see what's called a phase advancement. That means that people start, melatonin starts being produced earlier in the cycle. This by the way, is the reason why your grandparents want to go to dinner at 5.30 in the afternoon, because their melatonin is kicking off early because their phase advanced. And speaking of melatonin, one of the things that we know happens a lot in people that are my age and older, that's 55 plus, is we do see a decrease in overall melatonin production. This is a graphic that I think you'll find interesting. On the top, we see somebody who's about 30, 35 years old, and you can see they gradually go from wake into one, two, three, stage four sleep, back into three, back into two, on into REM sleep, and everything is moving very nicely. It's, it's a very even flow. But now look at the second graph on the bottom. And well, you actually see many awakenings throughout the night. In fact, this individual never gets into stage four sleep. That's somebody who's about 75, 76 years old. So you can see there's a real qualitative difference between the two. In this graphic, this takes a look at total minutes across the night in each one of the stages. And one of the things that I find so interesting is if you look in the middle of this graph at the thing that says SWS or slow wave sleep, boy, when we're five years old, we're getting a ton of that stuff. But by the time we're 85, we're, we're really not getting very much at all. And remember, that's our physical restoration. We've also actually seen changes to people's brains as they get older. Now, you might be thinking, what are you talking about? We've actually seen a decrease in brain to cranium volume a loss of neurons, even a loss of brain mass. Uh, and this can have a pretty big effect on your overall ability to sleep. So again, the brain is actually physiologically changing and it is having some kind of an effect on your sleep. 
One of the things that we know is when we start to look at brain waves, that gives us an idea about the health of the brain. And so the height of the waves and the frequency of the waves tell us a whole host of things about this person's sleep. So in this graphic, you can see this is a 15-year-old male who's got great stage three, four sleep. Got huge waves, they're nice and thick. Uh, they look beautiful together. Now when you look at the graph in the middle, you see a 65-year-old male who's doing pretty well. That's what a good one looks like. Now if you look at an older person, age 64, you see typical delta activity of older men. Look what's going on here. You see it's much thinner, it's not as wide. It becomes problematic from an EEG standpoint to even identify as you get older. So in fact, true changes are occurring in our brain and we see it here in the EEG waveforms. Now, what's been interesting is uh, there's been a poll uh, called the Sleep in America poll, and we looked at all of the health habits of older adults. And what they discovered was almost two thirds, that's like 66% of older adults reported experiencing one or more symptoms of a sleep problem at least a few nights a week. The first poll took into account the habits of older Americans, those between the ages of 55 and 84, and the association between their sleep behavior, medical and physical conditions, and their outlooks and lifestyles. The poll found that the better health of older adults, the more likely they are to sleep well. This turns out to be a very important point. The greater number of diagnosed medical conditions, the more likely they are to report sleep problems. So I wanna be very, very clear, rather than a consequence of aging, poor sleep among older Americans appears to be an indicator of your health status. So if your health isn't good, that means your sleep isn't good. So if your sleep isn't good, that's giving you a window to let you know something else might be going on. Remember, sleeping during the night changes as we increase with age. Less deep sleep, more lighter sleep, more difficulty maintaining sleep due to those arousals and awakenings, and sleep is less efficient and more fragmented. The internal biological clock shifts earlier and changes our bedtimes, and quite frankly, old people experience higher prevalence of medical conditions and tend to take meds that interrupt sleep or are associated with problems or disorders. So there's a lot of people out there who even with some of these physiological changes as we age are still able to sleep quite well. I wanna take a second and I wanna talk about some of the issues that happen as we age that we're all concerned about, um, and that has to do with uh, symptoms of cognitive decline. So scientists now think there are several types of protein deposits that cause the degradation of brain cells, leading to the progressively more serious problems of memory, learning, mood, behavior, all the stuff that we talk about when we talk about Alzheimer's. One is called beta amyloid proteins. These build up uh, and form plaque around the brain cells. And tau proteins, these develop into fiber-like knots known as tangles, and they wrap themselves around the brain. And as they squeeze, that's called Alzheimer's. There's a growing body of research that indicates that poor quality sleep and not getting enough sleep, so it's quantity and quality, are linked to greater amounts of these two proteins, beta amyloid and tau. Over a seven year period, scientists looked at patients' beta amyloid activity using PET scans. Uh, these are positron emission topography scans or brain scans, and here's what they found. People with excessive daytime sleepiness at the beginning of the study were more likely to have higher levels of beta amyloid over time. In these sleep-deprived people, a significant amount of beta amyloid buildup occurred in two particular areas of the brain. Um, and in people with Alzheimer's, these two areas of the brain tended to show very high levels of beta amyloid buildup. Now, cut over to scientists over at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. They were investigating the possible links between sleep quality and several important markers for, for Alzheimer's found in spinal fluid. The Madison researchers found that people who experience excessive daytime sleepiness showed more markers for the beta amyloid. They also found that daytime sleepiness linked to more markers for tau proteins. So people who reported sleeping poorly and who had greater numbers of sleep problems showed more of both of the Alzheimer's biomarkers. That's really important thing to start thinking about, right? So what we're now finding is poor sleep is leading to the buildup of these proteins and these proteins appear to be leading to the buildup of Alzheimer's. It was just discovered a few years ago that scientists found an unidentified system in the brain that clears the waste of beta amyloid uh, associated with Alzheimer's. It's called the glymphatic system, and it goes into overdrive when we hit sleep. I kind of think of it like the waste management system of the brain. You know those big trucks that come and they dump all your garbage? It's like there's one of those trucks that comes in and kind of gathers up all the beta amyloid and tau and gets it out of there. Believe it or not, the glymphatic system becomes 
10 times more active of clearing waste from the brain when you're asleep. So this is easily some of the most compelling research yet to show the importance of healthy sleep to long-term brain health, especially cognitive health. So when you sleep, scientists now think your glymphatic system steps up its activity to remove potential harmful debris that's collected over your waking day. So if you sleep poorly or you go without sufficient sleep on a regular basis, you risk missing out the full effects of this cleansing process, okay? I have plenty on my YouTube channel about how to get better sleep throughout the night. We publish two videos a week, so be sure to subscribe. Also, as you age, know that your chronotype also changes. So what your sleep schedule looked like in your 30s turns out to be different than what it might look like in your 50s and your 60s. To learn how to get the best sleep according to your chronotype, check out your video right here. This is Dr. Michael Bruce, The Sleep Doctor, wishing you sweet dreams.